Okay guys, so um, what we're going to look at today is the design inspiration for um, my entry into the uh, Great Guitar Build-Off. Um, so a bit of pedigree for me is this is going to be the fourth guitar that I've, uh, that I've built since I started last year um, during Lockdown 1. And it was at that time during Lockdown 1 that my boy came to me and said, Dad, can you build me a signature guitar? He must have been watching Brian May or something like that. Um, and he wanted his own signature guitar. Now, building a guitar is something I've wanted to do for some time. And the, the lockdown gave us uh, a certain opportunity there uh, to be able to pursue that. Uh, and so I said, yeah, why not? Let's give it a go. See if we can see what we can come up with. Um, and so after um, looking at inspiration, design, that kind of thing, we came up, or I came up, with this shape here. And this is the Jagenbacker, okay? And this goes from talking to my boy. He liked the, uh, the offset shape of uh, a Jaguar. Um, and he also liked uh, the horns that you find on a Rickenbacker. Now, I know these aren't great copies of uh, Rickenbacker horns, but actually, when you look at the whole design of the guitar, I think they fit um, quite nicely. So the body itself is made of sapili, which is a mahogany. Um, the neck is made of maple. While we're talking about the wood, the uh, fretboard is made from uh, a wood called panga panga. Um, the inlays are mother of pearl. The sc scratch plates on the outside, they're not conventional. Uh, scratch plate material they're actually made of um, perspex and when we look at the hardware um, they use Wilkinson uh, locking um, locking tuners the hardware at the bottom really that's just uh, generic parts um, off of eBay okay they, they they perform the same function the finish may not be as great um, but there you go it also has um, lock-in uh, strap clips. Okay, so this is the uh, white one. The color of this guitar is Olympic white. Okay, it also has the features of a belly cut and a slight chamfer on the upper belt of the uh, of the guitar. Now, to move on to. Uh, so you, now we've seen the, the kind of thing um, I like making um, in terms of, uh, of the guitar. I'm going to move on to the uh, guitar, build off guitar. And I'm going to employ uh, modern technology in the design of, uh, of my guitar. And this really comes about because once I'd finished uh, these guitars, I was looking at the fact that if I didn't stop, I was going to fill my house up with guitars and there's only so many guitars uh, you can keep around the house because not only have I got these but I've got the shop bought ones uh, I've got the shop bought guitars um, as well uh, so of course they really really pile up so I have to be careful I have to be reasonable on what I can uh, build to go in the house uh, and so I thought well what am I going to do uh, and I started looking into the idea of well CNC sounds quite interesting and, uh, and I know uh, there are people putting a sign of the devil as soon as I say CNC but it was the fact I couldn't keep building guitars, so I thought I'll, I'll learn something new uh, and I will learn um, CNC. Uh, and so that meant I could learn the uh, CAD programs, the CNC programs, and to that end I bought a small hobbyist uh, CNC machine. Okay. The joy of CNC for me is I can design on Inkscape uh, a guitar body. So my kind of aim for this is I want to build a guitar where a pencil has never touched a piece of paper and I know for a lot of people that's the antithesis of uh, guitar building but I really do want to build a guitar where a pen has never touched a piece of paper uh, and that's kind of the way I'm looking at it uh, and CNC is my way to deliver that so I'm going to use uh, a program called Inkscape which I'll be previewing um, a little bit after this uh, after this conversation um, and I'll be previewing that a little bit in this video 
Uh, obviously, it's not going to be uh, an Inkscape, Inkscape tutorial. Um, there isn't time for that. But you can see that um, I'm going to hopefully present it in a way that you can see uh, the general design process uh, using the CAD program. And again, there'll be people out there that use CAD all the time and, and will shout me down for what I'm doing. Um, I'm not asking apologies for that. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm on that learning curve um, like a lot of people. So I'm going to introduce you to uh, a CAD designed guitar. Okay. Now, remember this design is nothing to do with CAD itself. Okay. This is my idea in a piece of MDF. Okay. You can't, it's not a guitar, I'll be honest with you, it's not a guitar I would build, but it's a guitar I designed. Okay, and I, the only difference is I designed it in software. Okay, and I, I originally designed it with the idea that this might make a, a nice guitar uh, that I can build. So I designed it in CAD and I put it through my CNC machine to cut the shapes out. Um, now I told you earlier that I've got a hobbyist uh, CNC machine and the bed of the CNC machine is 300 mil by 180 mil. There is no way I can build a guitar body on 300 mil by 180 mil. But what I can do in CAD is design the guitar and then cut it up into pieces then those pieces are sent to the CNC machine and the machine will cut out those pieces and all I've got to do at the end of it is bring those pieces together, uh, glue them up and I've got a body. So if you look at the body of this guitar, I'm just going to move it forward a little bit for, for you. You can see the body itself is actually made out of four pieces. Okay, So this was designed in software. The software I then cut into four, uh, sorry, the uh, the design I cut into four pieces, printed out the four individual pieces, and then joined them together um, at the end. Okay, so this is CN this is designed on Inkscape and cut on the CNC machine. All of this has been cut on a C CNC machine and joined together. Okay, now the frets on here um, have all been worked out uh, with precision. And if any of those slots are out, they are going to be out by fractions of a millimetre. Okay, so that's where this really, really comes in. Um, it's using the accuracy of uh, the CNC machine to get the result that you're looking for. Now, as I said to you, I, I designed it. Um, I've made the template for it. And I've left it lying around for a few weeks looking at it. Uh, and I just decided, no, this isn't uh, this isn't the design. I, I, I actually want to put the that much time and effort into it. Although there are design features in here um, I like, um, they don't all come together for me um, in a way that presents the guitar I would like to build. Okay, so that's kind of looking at the method. And once we get past the CNC uh, part of it. Um, the uh, the methods are going to be very traditional after that. Well, when I say traditional, uh, I suppose modern traditional, if you like, in the fact I'm going to be using um, routers uh, to route the, the guitar body from the uh, from the templates uh, which I've uh, I've produced. And it's interesting because while I was uh, working through a guitar design on Inkscape. Uh, I came up with a shape, and for some reason, it kind of felt uh, familiar. It, there was something about it that, when I was looking at it, it, it reminded me of something, although I couldn't actually put my finger on uh, on what it was. Um, so I went on the internet and started searching around. Um, and the cue was architectural rather than uh, instrumental. Um, we're all aware of Art Deco. There's going to be a guitar in there somewhere. Um, and then, of course, you've got Georgian, etc., etc. All these styles of uh, architecture. And as I was trawling through the internet, I kind of hit on uh, where I'd got that inspiration from. 
and it's from a style of architecture which is wonderfully named Googie. And I'd never heard of Googie architecture before. Um, it's often referred to as hamburger architecture um, after hamburger joints in the US uh, that used to employ uh, Googie styling uh, quite a bit. So if we have a look just on this side, we can see there are some uh, styling features there. Um, one of those features is the boomerang. And I, I know I can, if you, if you look at the boomerang shape, it almost gives itself uh, to guitar horns. Um, and then of course you have these uprights, uh, brilliant. And, they're, they're, and they're, they're said to be uh, very futuristic because they're, they're thrusting towards the stars. Um, and if you want uh, another inspiration for Googie architecture, you just have to look up uh, the Jetsons. Apparently the Jetsons is pure uh, Googie architecture. And so that was the, the inspiration uh, for my guitar build off. I wanted to bring some of those styling cues uh, to my guitar. Um, and the reason was, if you think about uh, Googie architecture, which was uh, the 1955 to uh, the end of uh, the 60s, so it spanned a 15 year or so uh, life. Um, you know, we're talking about the heyday on, and the, the dawning of uh, the electric guitar um, and, and the time when the electric guitar was becoming um, really, really popular. Uh, so we have the Stratocaster, we have the Telecaster, uh, classics of their time. Uh, but I want a slightly uh, different take on that. And I want to bring in some of the architecture of the time. Um, and it turns out that it's, uh, that it's Googie. Uh, so with that, we're going to go over now and uh, we're going to move into the Inkscape where we're going to have a little look at the design software and see how we can use that to create the shapes uh, for the guitar I'm going to build. Okay guys, so this is uh, the Inkscape program. Um, you can see it's, uh, it's a pretty standard looking um, paint program uh, that I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you um, how to create uh, shapes in um, Inkscape. So what we're going to do here, you can see I've got the body shape of the, uh, of the, of the Googie there, but there's no, um, there's no headstock. The, if we, if we just uh, zoom in, we can see that, um, come across here, the holes for the, um, tuners have already been put into place so all we've got to do now is draw the shape um, or the general shape of the uh, of the uh, the headstock so for that we need to go to the drawing command over here which will do straight lines so the first line I'm going to put in so if we take this as the headstock I'm going to put a line in that goes from there over to there now it's all very general at the moment because it's all going to be uh, it's all going to be uh, tweaked as we go along. So I'm going from there. I'm then going to just bring a line out, probably to about there, and then it's going to come down straight. So it's going to be parallel with the uh, with the tuners. I'm going to bring it down in that direction. Bring it along to here. It's going to come out to here. Again, this is just general because we can uh, we can tweak all this as we uh, as we go. So I'm going to bring that one to uh, there, and I'm going to finish that by bringing it onto there. So now you can see we've created um, a basic shape for the uh, the headstock. So I need now to go in and start modifying that. So if I bring that one, if I go to path, which is this one, we can see the nodes here for um, where I've drawn the shape. And this is, a, this is effectively the, um, the turning points. So using the, the, the Google, uh, sorry, the Googie theme, 
um, I'm going to put in some extra nodes. So I'm going to put one there, and I'm going to put one there. Okay, so now what I can do is, if you look, I can start to form the shape for the headstock. Okay, um, we've got several buttons up here which allow us to to modify those. Um, but what I'm going to do for now, I'm going to put another node in there, and I'm going to put another node in there. And if I go if I go to this node here, and then come up to this button, you can see it starts to make rounded corners for me. So I'm just going to bring that in to there. Just click off, and you can see that's rounded that corner off. Okay, so we're going to do the same on here. Bring a node into here, one in there, click on that one. So now we're finished with the headstock. I did make a big play earlier on of the accuracy of uh, CAD and CNC. So I'm just going to go in and show you some uh, measurements, just to give you some idea of uh, how that works out and how accurate it can be. So I'm just going to click on measure here, and I've got to, I've got two ends of uh, my tape measure. So I'm just going to bring that roughly to the area of uh, the bridge, and this one is going roughly to the area um, of the nuts. So once I've got those in, um, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, now the pink uh, line is the center line of the guitar. So this is the line that everything uh, lines off of. And we come up here and we can see this end of the tape measure is just a little bit out of the way. So I'll just bring it up to there, uh, zoom in a bit more. I mean, the joy of this is we can zoom right in and uh, and get very very accurate measurements. Uh, where are we? We're here now. You can see it's just a a little bit to the side of the line. So we bring that in, um, and I'm I'm quite happy with that. So we'll make our way out of there, and we'll come down to the end where the bridge is, and again zoom in for that. And you can see the other end of our, uh, our tape measure is, is quite a bit off. So I'm just going to take that end and move it into uh, the middle here. Uh, now this is uh, my datum point 
uh, at the bridge end for making the measurements um, relate to the rest of the guitar. Now, if we have a look there, we can see 647.78 um, millimeters. But if I just come over here and I can change it into inches, you can see that it's 25.5 inches. So from the, uh, the nut to the bridge, the scale length is spot on. Um, if we come back this way a little bit more to the frets themselves, we can see that there's a mark there and a mark there, and it's showing us the distance between uh, frets. So between there and there is uh, 6.64 inches. Um, and if you go to a, a fret scale chart, um, showing the distances between frets, you'll see 0.64 inches uh, for that fret. Okay, so I've just got the idea for the carve there. It's not exactly on the center, but... Uh, it's very close. It, when, I, when I'm talking close, these lines here are quarter of a millimeter wide. So that gives you some idea of um, how accurate they are. So yes, yeah, so we come back up here and we can zoom out. And there, there you are. That's the, uh, uh, that's the guitar. That's showing you um, one of the aspects of the, um, the accuracy you can get out of this. So that's me. Um, that's me finished for uh, for this video. I hope you found it interesting. Um, maybe maybe you learnt something. I'm always learning. <laughs> um, so maybe you learnt something. Perhaps you're not so uh, hostile against uh, uh, CAD designs uh, and things like that. Um, the CAD design gives you a lot of freedom. Um, it means you don't have to keep going over uh, your paper with a rubber. Uh, and finding that uh, some of it hasn't come out. This is really clean. If you want to take any element out, you take it out. If you want to put any element in, you just put it in. Um, and you've got a nice clean design there that you can see um, exactly um, what you're, you're going to make. Um, and of course, with the ruler, you can check to make sure all of your dimensions are spot on. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there for you. Uh, thanks for paying attention. Please uh, follow me while I go through uh, this project of building this guitar for the Great Guitar Build-Off. Um, and I will absolutely look forward to seeing you in the, uh, the next video. Take care. Bye.